Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, this is Fakadu Ratta from Hawasa University, uh, College of Agriculture from Human Nutrition uh, Department. Today, I would like to give a brief summary about the Youth and Education Support Service Ethiopia, or Yes Ethiopia. As you know, uh, we have been promoting this uh, non-profit, uh, local non-profit organization called Youth and Education Support Service Ethiopia, or Yes Ethiopia, for the last two years. Uh, this is really a very, uh, I would say, uh, innovative uh, intervention from our side to address the problem of youth unemployment and education quality in Ethiopia. But why is this Yes Ethiopia started? What is the major motive behind the movement? And what do we like to achieve as the end? And what did we uh, learn until today? I'd like to give a very short summary. So please stay with me. Yes, thank you very much. So Youth and Education Support Service Ethiopia in Amharic, Ethiopia Tasuch and uh Gaf Agalglot. We call it Yes Ethiopia. It is started during uh, the COVID pandemic in May 2020. And uh, since its establishment, we really made very good progress. But before I go into details of our progress, I would like to give a very brief summary about why we started this Ethiopia, Youth and Education Support Service Ethiopia. As you can see from its name, there are two very important words, use and education, right? I get this question from uh, different people uh, in different occasions about why Ethiopia was started and if we can also deliver what we plan to achieve as part of this mission. Our biggest motive when we started this Ethiopia is the fact that a lot of university graduates in Ethiopia are being coming unemployed from time to time. We have been witnessing this problem, unemployment of university graduates, right from the time when we finish our undergraduate study until today. The problem is not getting better, honestly speaking, even if uh, there are a lot of people who get job. There are a lot of uh, new businesses which are being started. But compared to the number of young people graduating from Ethiopian universities, still we have a very big number of youths looking for job. Some of them becoming demotivated. And the impact is affecting our education system. Uh, my own students who are currently studying, they give me comments. They say they know that a lot of their seniors didn't get job, even if they finished with a very good academic results, still they struggle to find a job or still they struggle to start their own businesses. For this reason, the education sector in the country, this can be the same scenario in African countries also, but I can confidently speak about the situation in Ethiopia. The education sector is not becoming really attractive uh, mission for most youth because they see even if you have a very good grade, even if you work hard in the university, when you go out, it's becoming very difficult to get a job. And to get a job, you need to be close to central towns or regional towns and the towns and the national capital, especially if you are far from uh, urban areas. It's very, very difficult to get a job. In the meantime, starting on jobs is also not easy. So me, as an university teacher, have been in Hawasa University almost for more than 10 years. What should I do? What can I do differently so that this problem of unemployment be challenged? So that our education quality keep being rewarding? So that a lot of young people, the young generation, the future generation, love and respect and engage in education sector uh, as a way to improve their lives? also as a way to help the country out of poverty. So, Youth and Education Support Service Ethiopia, or Yes Ethiopia, was started learning from all the volunteer activities we have been doing before for 10, 15 years, starting from my, my time in high school. This is a way to add value. This is a way to use our time effectively. This is a way to get motivated and to share the motivation with others in our network. So. Why did we start this Ethiopia? The first biggest mission or the first biggest driving force for the start of Ethiopia is the fact that most of our university graduates are unemployed. Either I have to find another career. Honestly speaking, I'm a university teacher now. 
and I have been here for more than a decade, but I have to be a little bit creative or I have to find another career. I've seen this sector for a very long time. It's not really becoming attractive for myself, not only because the education sector is the salary is not good. I can manage about the salary issue. I don't complain about salary, honestly speaking. Rather, I'm not morally satisfied. I'm not getting the inspiration when I see the career of my own students. Where did they in? What is the feedback I'm getting from my students? I used to get like messages coming from very talented, very good students of my own who say, teacher, I feel very sorry. I am in a very deep depression. I'm feeling hopeless. I couldn't work. I couldn't help myself for this reason. I am in poverty. My families are in poverty. I am in general hopeless. There are even texts which says, some of the young people are going to commit suicide. Imagine staying in this kind of sector where even students, those who graduate with gold medal, they struggle and they lose hope in the education sector. So what is my role in this scenario? This is the biggest question we wanted to answer. So we have to challenge this problem. We have to take this as an opportunity and change it into something that inspires us, that inspires our children, our children, our students, and the young generation in the country and globally. And we are really happy and we are really encouraged by all the people who are supporting us, who are motivating us, and those even who, those even who are collaborating with us to create opportunities for young people. Uh, my biggest motivation for this was, as I said, as I've been learning all my time after I started teaching in Hawassa University. I've been learning from my study abroad in Denmark. I've been learning from my field work in rural Ethiopia. My major is agriculture and human nutrition. So I'm closely monitoring about what's happening with the life of the rural families in Ethiopia, with the poor families in this country, with better earning families, even in relation to nutrition and health. There are a lot of things that should be done in Ethiopia. Unfortunately, our research and our teaching is not making impact. Me and those of you in the education sector, those of you who are really interested, those of you who really commit to make something better in the society, we need to stop and think. We need to stop and think. What are we doing? For example, let me mention about research-related issues. Even if I cannot claim to be a very good researcher, I have seen papers published by very good researchers, very quality people in my network. There are some very good research projects in which I was part of a team. We do a research, we publish our papers, then all our remote recommendations are staying on shelf. Maybe I, I, I have then a research, then I became a professor in Hawassa University or in a given higher education institution in Ethiopia. But the ultimate goal of doing a research is not becoming a professor. The ultimate goal of research, teaching, whatever development missions we are planning, is to support those needy people, is to support the communities, our research subjects, to improve their lives. A lot of people in Ethiopia still cannot get three times daily. People cannot eat, only the wealthy, those who have privilege, those who have network, are living a better life, I know, but majority are still struggling. Even if the country's economy is improving, for sure, it's not to deny the good missions which have been done in the country, but it's not enough. Given the technology we have, given all the educated manpower, given the expanding research and academic institutions, the amount of impact we are making in the lives of our people is not satisfactory. We cannot claim big success. We have a lot of things to do. Research impact is very minimum. Academic impact is very minimal. If we do, we do 
You can do an independent opinion research for satisfaction survey. Go to all graduated Ethiopian uh, youths and ask them how they feel about their life. I'm very sure majority of them would be really very, very critical about what they get. That's why now, yes, Ethiopia, what we do, even from the video I'm recording right now, our intention is promoting youth employment and job creation to be a high, very high national agenda. Whatever we do, whatever we invest, wherever we engage, we need to think how these engagements are helping the young people in the country. Are we really giving job opportunities for the youth? Are we supporting those who have businesses? Are we facilitating investments and private sector development in the country? What is the financial market? What is the support being given for people who have ideas? How is our curriculum? How are we connecting all the 45 universities in Ethiopia so that they learn from each other and that also they learn from the other part of the country? By the time our youth graduate, so that they have the energy and the motives and the, motiv the inspiration and have the chance to directly impact and to directly engage with the community and then improve the life of people. So Yes Ethiopia was started to talk, to promote, to engage and to show by practice some of the uh, better ways of doing youth unemployment uh, solutions. So what do we do? We give the youth short training opportunities. These trainings are usually uh, trainings which our youth are not getting from their academic curriculums. For example, job interview, uh, CV writing, job application writing, and then work ethics, and then a chance to engage in the community through volunteer activities. Even if this can be done broadly all over the country, wherever Ethiopian universities are there, Everybody, until today, until May 2020, you can evaluate your university, you can evaluate your town, you can evaluate your environment, and then ask yourself, how big are we using our manpower? At least through volunteer activities, so that they contribute to their environment, so that they get the inspiration and the valuableness, you know? A lot of you, they say, why I exist? What's my mission? What is, I, I ask them when I give them a life skill training, what is your life goal? Some of the youth, they say, teacher, even I have no idea why I'm in this world. They say like that. I don't have the energy. I don't know why I exist. This is a very big issue. We need to show our youth that they are needed in this country, that they are solutions, they are not problems. Whenever we discuss about unemployment of university graduates or whatever, we have to discuss it from a point of view that this is an opportunity for Ethiopia, for Africa, for the world. It's, it's not a problem, actually. Young people are not problems. University graduation is a blessing. We are not discussing about corona or some given disease or a pandemic. We are discussing about young people, energetic people, healthy people who are asking to work. They are asking to work. It's an opportunity. So what do we do in Ethiopia? As I said, we give them a short training, different kinds of inspirational, mindset targeted, life skill targeted, conflict management, for example, social media utilization, job searching skills, networking skills, how to use LinkedIn and other professional social medias, how to write emails, and then for them to approach employers, people who could potentially give them job, to say, look, I have this degree, I can do, I have learned something from the university in this field of specialization, and I'm ready to learn with you. I'm ready to contribute my knowledge, skills, and experiences, even free of cost, so that I learn from their practical work environment. So we are teaching the young people to be proactive. That's number one. Number two, even if they have business ideas in Ethiopia, there are a lot of young people would be discouraged. As you know, we need businesses. For employment to be there, someone should give job. But who is ready to give job? You need to be supported by the financial environment, by the 
uh, job creation and all these different kinds of office, offices and by different organizations genuinely working for the mission of uh, youth empowerment and national development. We know we live in a very delicate world where sometimes countries work against each other, where sometimes missions are contradicting. I know there are a lot of missions that would like to see a better country, a better Ethiopia, a better Africa, free from poverty. In the meantime, we know there are a lot of forces who would like to keep Africa in poverty. We fully understand this. But we challenge all these things through positive energy, through tactical approach, through wisely working together, and through uh, gradual uh, non-stop struggles. It's a very delicate environment that we are working on. We want Africa to be a better place. We want Ethiopia to be a better place. In the meantime, we know we also need to win the odds. We also need to, we need to work against the enemies, I'll say I put enemy in a quote, because there are only wrong ideas. There are no natural enemies. But because of all these different conflict, conflicts and conflict of interest is happening across the world, because of this polarized world, the West and East, sometimes we find our country in between, like in a very difficult situation. We see what's happening. All the ongoing war, conflict and the like. There are a lot of reasons behind all this we understand. But how many Ethiopians do really understand all these national and international development uh, paradigms and all these conflicting ongoing issues, the ongoing conflict between economies, between culture, one trying to dominate the other? We know it's very few Ethiopians who could go that far, analyze and then make a very systematic, wise approach to solving these problems. So we are here as a Ethiopia advocating, promoting for better employment, better education quality, better job creation, and better socio-cultural and economic coexistence in Ethiopia, also globally. I'm very sure there is no one who have a better soul than myself. There is no one who have a less important soul than myself. We all are equal. We are all human beings and we have all the right to exist and to have a better life in this world. There, I don't see as such a reason why people go all these ways to kill each other. I don't know why all this amount of hate and bad scenarios have been created in this world. But the best way approach, the best way forward, we are here to make it better. We don't wait the other world, the other person, some organizations to solve our problems. At least we speak about it. That's the minimum we could do. As Yes Ethiopia, we take the initiative, a proactive approach, that's our major philosophies. We don't wait to be told. Whatever we think is correct, we try to do it. We try to show it by example. We don't uh, try to harm others. That's also another principle of yes, Ethiopia. We are non-political. We don't engage in politics. We don't engage as such in uh, some conflicting agendas. As much as possible, we are neutrally engaging with all possible stakeholders so that the issue of education and use become top agenda. And while doing this, we also show by examples. One of our best examples we have from our mission so far is that volunteer activities became very, very nice to motivate our young people. We know giving them job, giving them salaries is not easy. But what can we do? Now we make our slogan. What we say? No one, no young people in the world should spend a day idle. As far as he or she is ready to work, at least we should facilitate a free service. We know wherever we go across the world, there are something to be done. Very recently, I was in the United States twice. This very beautiful, very big country, a global power, even if it have all this wealth, I have seen even in the United States, 
there are cases when we need volunteer missions. I've seen a lot of people who are very uh, obvious, for example, I've seen people on the streets, I've seen people who still struggle to be part of this global giant economy. I've been in Europe, I know, even in Europe, there are a lot of needs, as you know, now, the, the Russia and Ukraine conflict is a very good example. Come to Ethiopia, Africa, for sure, Soviet, we have a lot of things to be done. And we should not associate everything with payment. There are a lot of people who are willing to give. Those who have money, those who have ideas, those who have experiences. We need to use these opportunities. Of course, for those who don't have income, for those who don't have enough, for those who have business ideas, we need to give them a business and a work opportunity. So, yes, Ethiopia, after we, have, we started, as you know, we started during the corona, a very difficult time, thanks to the internet. I always acknowledge those who made the internet technology. It benefited me a lot. I've gained a lot from the internet. It made my life very, very, very easy. And it helped me expand my missions. So, during the COVID pandemic, we started an online training. As you know, all the education sector was closed. Everybody was back home. All our classes were closed. What we do, thanks to Hawasa University, thanks to this very fast internet, I was teaching online. By that time, we did, I think, train about 120 very bright, high-quality Ethiopians who had access to the internet. They attended our life skill trainings. During those trainings, we used to invite experienced people from different parts of work and then they share their experiences with the young people that was a very good experience then in the meantime we started volunteer activities giving free lunch in hawasa town we gave this free lunch for very poor people in the town immediately around hawasa university college of agriculture we can walk around and ask but we don't want to do that we have a lot of feedbacks, a lot of success stories, and that was really, really inspiring. And we are also working with the orphanage centers. Here in Awasa, there are about 400 children who, have, who don't have families. So there are a lot of very nice Ethiopians who are taking care of these children. So we help them. We take our unemployed graduates, and then we show them this orphanage, and they love it. They love going there and supporting. That's how we make use of unemployed workforce. And the other thing, we also engage with uh, different partners. Recently, we started working with uh, uh, NUFIC, Orange Knowledge Program, pro uh, program. We also work with Gender to Connect, QPoint from Netherlands, and we are giving short trainings. We are learning from all these missions. We also partnered with Talent Firm, which is funded, I think, by Mastercard Foundation through First Council, and we facilitated their training in Awasa. The mission was to reach 1,000 young people through employability and business training, and that was one of the very good success stories. We also started offices in different parts of the country. Now we have office in Adama, Addis Ababa, Dredawa, uh, Haramaya. Uh, we have office in uh, Walaita Zoddo and uh, Arbaminch, we're expanding. For sure, we are going to, now we are coming to Jimma, we are coming to Dase, Bahardar, Gondar, Makale, uh, Aksum, you see, Adigrat, all these places. We are hopeful that peace will be coming. The suffering of Ethiopians, Ethiopian moms will be over in a very short time. So we plan to reach all the different parts, including Jigjiga, Samara, and Yabello, all these marginal towns of the, the country. Our major mission is to try to reach for the most disadvantaged, not just serve those online, no. We know this does not solve a problem. It helps, but it doesn't address the problem from its roots. Where do we have the biggest unemployment? It's far from the center, it's not in Addis Ababa. Trust me, it's not in Awasa. The biggest unemployment is in the small towns. The further you go from the center, you find the biggest problem of Ethiopia. 
We need to go there. What if we go to Jinka? What if we go to South Omo? What if we go to Gambilla, Sosa, Jijiga, Samara, Moyali? All these marginal towns, they have the biggest problem in the country. We want to go there. We want to go and serve there and motivate the young people there. So, yes, Ethiopia, we are really doing our best. We are also asking volunteers, whoever is watching this video, you are all welcome to work with us. As far as you are ready to serve, as far as you are ready to see where we can share our experiences, where you can contribute, we are most welcome to work together. And our approach is cost minimum approach. That's what we do. We talk to a lot of people, they say they have problem of funding. Everybody is complaining about lack of finance. But we said, is it only finance that we have? What about our experiences? What about our knowledge? What about our networks? What about all these very rich people who have a lot of money? What about all the people in the diaspora, for example, who are working in a very big international organizations? I tell you, one of the biggest wasted opportunity from the Ethiopian diaspora and the African diaspora is their knowledge and their experiences. Whenever we think about diaspora, we think about the euros and the dollars. But they have a lot of knowledge and they have a lot of experiences. So my message to the people, those of you in the diaspora communities, please don't wait until you are invited. You have the internet. Now Ethiopia is in installing 5G. Look, we are going to have five fifth generation internet. Even the one we have now, 4G is, I tell you, it's very great. Let's use it. Let's work together. Let's start complaining. I mean, stop complaining. Let's start telling positive stories. We know politics is damaging. It has been damaging this country all our age, but we need to change that page. We need to change this through positive interactions, through working together genuinely and try to accommodate also tolerate each other. Well, I try to be non-political, but there can be others who are really political. It's okay. The, at the end of the day, we need a better world. We need a better country. We are part of this society. We are from this society. So let's work together. Uh, I'll upload these videos on YouTube and in different... I'll share it across our platforms. Please help by sharing. So yes, Ethiopia, we are really ready to work with all like-minded organizations. Work with us. If you want to address the problem of young people in Ethiopia, trust me, a single organization cannot make it. This is one very good example where collaboration is needed. As you know, the Ethiopian workforce is very big. We know we have conflicts of interest, especially financial. But when we work together, the joint effect is always more than what we can do alone. As far as we are good enough, as far as we are really bold enough to be very creati creative and critical about the missions we have. If we really want to impact on the lives of Ethiopians, if we really want to give a very good education for the young population, if we really want this young population to be motivated and um, powers for better change in the country, then we need to work together. And thank you very much. Uh, this is Fakadu from Hawassa University, as I said earlier. And uh, please, please help by sharing this video. Of course, subscribe and like. <laughs> we are also working now to make our YouTube page really very popular. And we, we need your support. And uh, I really wish you a very nice time. Please feel free to ask and watch other videos which I did upload about scholarships, about project management and other life skills. And we'll, sh we'll upload more videos and feel free to give us topics to ask questions. I remember what someone asked me about scholarship related questions, how to pay for um, application fees. I tell you the best way to is to have a, to have a friend in, in the diaspora or abroad if you want to go to let's say Europe. It's best to have someone in Europe that will pay for you, the online application fee, so that you pay for him here in Ethiopia. And that's the best advice I give for those who would like to pay online until Ethiopia would have 
uh, online payment systems. You need to depend on people. That's why you need friends. That's why you need to be really very good uh, connection platforms, especially use your LinkedIn. And uh, we can help each other in these ways. And I'm really ready to share as much as I can to the best of my knowledge. I cannot go beyond what I have, okay? And thank you everybody who's working with me. And thank you all of you in Ethiopian universities, especially those of you in Hawassa University, uh, for all the investment you have been making. And uh, we are really ready to work together. And we wish you a very nice time. And please uh, also keep engaging and sharing your ideas. Uh, recently, I'm very sure within two or three weeks, we'll start Ethiopian PhD students online discussion forum every week where PhDs learn from their uh, seniors and most experienced people globally and the like. So uh, there are a lot of things that we do. Thanks. I say thank you. Thank you so much those who made the internet technology. This is the biggest innovation which are, I know there are a lot of innovations but this is one of the biggest innovations that internet is changing lives but we need to use it for a good cause. There are people who use it for a very very bad and destructive intentions but we need to really turn that page into positive. There are a lot of people who are sharing very damaging, demotivating and negative contents to the young people. Please, 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 we need to be responsible and we need to use this internet for a very good end. Thank you very much. I'll come with another video. Have a nice time wherever you are.